All right, so how do you guys think we can make the debates better? Because I've watched both of them. As I said, I, I went to the last one. Uh, I tweeted on the first debate that technically these things have not even been debates. A debate is where they present an idea and then two or more people go back and forth on these same ideas. But basically what we've seen is moderators ask people questions catered to them so that they can talk about their things. So for example, uh, Jake Tapper would focus with uh, Lindsey Graham on foreign policy because he's a foreign policy guy, right? That's not a debate, that's just sort of lobbing up softball. So w what do you think we can do to make these things better? I'm back to let's make it fun and entertaining and do it like The Voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A candidate comes on, he yeah. has three minutes to talk, everyone, Wolf Blitzer, they all have their back to him, yeah. and as soon as he says one thing that they like, they turn around and he's in. That's, that's actually I... not, so you mask the voices, <laughs> yeah. right? You yes, Because yes. otherwise they'll know. Well, that's true. That's, that's, true. that's yeah. not the worst idea yeah. I've ever heard. I'm just saying. Uh, the last debate, which was on CNN, was fantastic because they, instead of getting a journalist to moderate it, they hired Eddie Haskell, <laughs> and uh, he just kept trying to get everybody to pick fights with each other. Yeah. He was like, now Donald Trump said to you that you were ugly. What do you want to say to him? Yeah. <laughs> so you're not a Jake Tapper guy, is that what you're telling me? No. That was, the, that was probably the worst. By the way, Jake Tapper, uh, he just announced that they're going to be start doing fact-checking of politicians with, uh, with factcheck.org, because mm -hmm. apparently at CNN, they don't know how to do that, so they had to hire an outside <laughs> organization to teach them how to fact-check at that's CNN. Funny. Nobody on Jake Tapper's staff really knows what they're doing. Right. So what that is, and why there was no real questions, and why there was no follow-up, there was no Candy Crowley moment at this debate mm -hmm. where they corrected Carly Fiorina for being a crazy person and saying blatant lies about Planned Parenthood, mm -hmm. what the reason they don't do that is because they don't want to alienate any of the viewers that like these people. So what they'll do is they say, hey, Jeb Bush said this, Donald Trump said that, what do you want to say to him? Instead of saying, hey, the facts are this, and yeah. you said this, how do you... They don't do that. So they're not doing journalism. They're doing Eddie Haskellism, and they're trying to get people to pick fights with each other. Yeah. I do agree with you, but on the other hand, that question needed to be asked to Carla Fier uh, the about the face thing. That needed to be asked. Oh, okay, You know, yes. about Trump saying, you know, calling her out on what, her looks or whatever. I mean, that is right. so, so terrible that it, it needed to be asked. Right, so I agree with you. It had to be addressed because it was just another absurdly misogynistic thing that, that Trump did. But interestingly, doesn't that then get more of the play the next day than anything that might be more important, such as foreign policy or immigration? I mean, really, can you think of any headline the next day that was related to policy? I'm sorry, and those not... are important things, but it's important how a person who is running for president is treating yeah. the women of this country. Yeah, I, That's I totally just agree. as important. I, I totally agree. And the GOP did make it clear that they welcome all women into the GOP, <laughs> even the ones who make Donald Trump wins. Yeah. <laughs> Even the ones with <laughs> <rough> um, <laughs> All right, so we, we haven't had a, a Democratic debate yet. We have one in a couple weeks in Vegas. Right. Um, as I said about in our Bernie segment, you know, the Democrats are supposed to be the big party. That's what everyone says. They're supposed to be the big party. But they've really only got two people running, for all intents and purposes, right? Hillary and Bernie. And then there's Jim Webb and, uh, and O'Malley. Well, but, but it's really only two people that anyone's talking about. So should we give the Republicans a little credit for at least they have 20 clowns in their clown car, while in the Democratic clown car there's really only two people? Well, Martin O'Malley did come out last week with a bold proposal. He said raise the age of gun ownership to 21 years old, and everybody responded by saying, who the fuck is Martin <laughs> O'Malley? <laughs> But that's my point. You know what? I'm going to call, call something crazy here. I think that that guy who's polling at negative 60, that nobody knows who he is, I think he has a little bit of a chance. Yeah. Because I think they're all going to get equal footing, and people are so sick of Hillary. On the, on the debate scene. Yeah, and I think, yes. I, I think he's a, he's a good-looking, middle-aged guy, and I, and I think he's a pretty decent guy, and I think people are suddenly going to go, who the hell is the, this guy? The irony is that it was Howard Dean who whose idea was to limit the number of Democratic debates because he saw what happened with all the Republican debates last time and how they ate each other and how it was just a clown show. And so he didn't want that to happen with the Democrats, so they made them limit them. But now we realize, hey, there's actually going to be a real debate now, so maybe we should do more of these because this is just free advertising for the Republican Party yeah. and we're not getting any for the Democrats and people still don't know where Bernie Sanders is. Right, so what can, what can we do? We've got, look, the election is over a year away, right? What can we 
do to make these debates better? Like, do, as the people, like, do we have to demand that they have to be done on PBS? I mean, they were done. I don't know if there's going to be any this upcoming year, but four years ago, some of them were done on PBS. I mean, something. How do we get it out of the gotcha thing, out of right. the does Carly have a wrinkle right. on her face I thing? I don't know what the answer for that is. I mean... It is going to be interesting to finally see Bernie and Hillary go at it, you know, mm -hmm. but how do you make it more interesting? And maybe they, you need to have someone like at the Oscars who did the little clips always beforehand, yeah. you know what I mean? To <laughs> right, the, like, have Billy Crystal know. come in and... Right, yeah. I don't know. Or, I mean, what do you... Well, it, 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 used well to be, it used to be that the League of Women Voters used to organize debates and other people used to... And then they got smart and they were like, hey, we can't let other people choose the people who are going to ask us questions. We want to control everything. So they created this presidential commission on debates and now, they're, so now there isn't any more we, League of Women... So it's all them controlling everything, which is why they suck. Right. So somebody has to stand up, like maybe women or some other big organization and say, hey, we want to have our own debate like the NAACP members say hey we're gonna have our own debate at our thing and we we're inviting people and then it'll be telling who doesn't show up right so that's the way they should do it unfortunately we know that the parties idea. won't yeah. the parties won't back that they won't because they have but Bernie Sanders will their, show up Bernie will show up and, and he'll do it alone but maybe that would be good all right so let's move on to what I think was the big elephant in the room or unfortunately not hey, in the room. come on <laughs> Jimmy Dore a giant elephant um the money in politics thing it is seems pretty obvious to me that we have a couple like real issues in America right now. The money in politics that's ruining our political system. We've got, you know, political correctness run amok. But nobody talked about money in politics. As I said before, I think I might have been the only person to ask him a question on this. Um, why do we not talk? We did talk about it. Wasn't there a McCain-Feingold thing yes. 15 years ago? We used to sort of talk about it every now and again. Nobody talks about it now, nobody right? Nobody wants to talk about it. I don't understand how we allow people to run for president as a candidate when they still owe money from the last time they tried to <laughs> you know, right. you know what I mean? Literally, like, I think Hillary yeah. might be in debt still from yeah, the previous thing. I feel thing. like if you owe money from the last time you didn't get elected, done. You can't run this time until you've paid everybody off. It is striking and outrageous that people don't mention it or talk about it. I think it's terrible. I mean, it's that's the only answer. I mean, what? how do you fix that, though? How yeah. do you fix that? Well, I did notice that when I asked some of the campaign people this, and even when I asked Scott Walker, they just they just link a couple words together yes. to put to make a sentence and then you move on because they they know they're not going to be asked this and they know no one cares that's what i really realized that when i asked them that there was a sense of ah that that stupid question like nobody cares about that ask me the ask me the gotcha question you know so yeah. so what do we do about that you know we uh Wolf-Pack.com, Dave. That's how we, you, you, there's a bunch of, that's the organization I'm a part of that helps mm -hmm. get money out of politics. And you, what you have to do is you have to pass a constitutional amendment, right, to get money out of politics. Hillary Clinton, by the way, said she's in favor of it. So, you know, and well, that'd be, that's good to hear. Also, the Senate also, if the United States Congress also passed a resolution to open debate on this. So that's a good thing. And three states, since we've been trying to push this, have already passed it, California being one of them. Illinois, and I think we have uh, New Hampshire or Vermont. Uh, so that's what you need to do. You need to get the states. You have to go at it, because the state level, they have much less control for whatever reason on the state capitals. Sure. So we can make an, so that's my big solution. We have to get money, and you can't fix anything. Why are we still debating climate change? Because big money. Right. Why are we still de debating, uh, should we drill in the uh, Arctic? Because of big money. Are we, why are we still bombing nonstop for 30 years in the Middle East? Big money. So is that, so that's really the crux of it, yes. that the reason we can't get the public to be ginned up enough to care is because they're getting their information from the very people who are paying for the operation to keep them dumb. Basically. The criminals bought the, the, the watchdog, right? The watchdog used to be uh, the, uh, Walter Cronkite in 60 Minutes, and then they got smart and they said, hey, let's just buy them. Yeah. And they bought them, and so now the guys who are working for the people are supposed to be exposing. So that's why they they're literally to, working for. So them. that's how you go. Well, how do we? So how do we get it in a Iraq war that lasts? That's how you get it because the people are working for defense contractors. They're supposed to be exposing defense contractors, and they're not. That's what's wrong. Yeah. Do you think there's a reality where it'll ever turn around? Uh, yes, I think I, if we get money out of politics and so so Teddy happened before right so Teddy Roosevelt came along and he did the antitrust legislation right they used to call them trusts back then mm -hmm. because they would take anyway that was the 
So now that's what we need. We need him, and then we need FDR. FDR stood up and said, never before in the history of America has the moneyed people been more organized in their hatred for one candidate. And I welcome their hatred. And Could you imagine? Can you imagine anyone saying that? Anyone saying, saying that, that today besides Bernie Sanders. Right. So you, I had a little inspiration from you first because it sounded like it could happen, but then I just thought, well, if we get Hillary as president or let's say we get Jeb Bush, pretty sure they're not making that speech. I think we're going to have a revolution if that happens. <laughs> we may well I'm have gonna, a revolution. I'm going to buy a gun. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about religion in politics because uh -huh. that, that's the other big one. And look, a guy, Mike Huckabee's up there. This is a guy that the week before mm. was defending Kim Davis. Mm. Everyone knows about Kim Davis and not giving the marriage licenses to gay people. And Mike Huckabee actually defended her by saying you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't, you know, partake in a law that you don't believe is moral. That is the most ridiculous anti-American thing you could possibly do. It shows a profound lack of understanding of how government works and our constitution and all that. Uh, so, but there's there's him. There's Cruz, there's Santorum, and these guys, and even now uh, Ben Carson. Um, but what do we do about this conversation? Religion should have nothing. We have separation of church and state. I think. What, what do we do We're about this? Supposed to. <clears throat> well, I was googling this topic matter earlier, and I saw that the Boy Scouts don't allow atheists in the Boy Scouts, right? And I was thinking, it's people don't want to trust other people who aren't religious or can pretend to be religious, you know, with decisions that are going to impact them. I kind of get it. But on the other hand, have you ever been around, I have aunts that are so religious, they are evil. You know what I mean? <laughs> have you yeah. ever been around people like that? Yeah. You know, uh, I went to Catholic school. Right, <laughs> right. That's what you mean. And, and when I look at the Republican <laughs> uh, spectrum out there, the candidates, I'm like, oh my God. These people are evil. You yeah. know what I mean? If 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 you have blinders like this uh, about religious and how everyone has to follow the same religion or the same thing that you're doing, I mean that is just as bad as someone who who has a void of it. And and I know that's just a, as bad as those horrible well, atheists, atheists who don't want to hurt I, anyone and want I people know, to live with secular I values. I know it's just as equally horrible. Wow. But is this is this the irony of? Is this the irony of Republicans that they say yes. they want small government, right? Yes. They say they want small government, and then at the same time they keep jamming Jesus. Did you read my notes? Everyone, I didn't look. There's, <laughs> there's even notes. Yeah. Because you said your question is how do we get religion out of government? And my whole thing is they should be made to go to an uh, religious people should have to take an irony class, <laughs> right? So right. we have Kim Davis, who's thrice divorced, making a religious stand for the sanctity of marriage. Yeah. That's uh, you know, and and now the Oath Keepers have promised to defend her in case they don't want to lock her up again. Right. And she's so grateful, she promised to marry three or four of them. <laughs> so, and then they played that song, right? With the, uh, the, the, I, the tiger. And so when she came out, and she and they and then she got in trouble for that, because they didn't want her, the survivor doesn't want her to use that song. Yeah. But she said she liked that song so much, she's going to play it at her next three weddings. The point is, Dave, I have a lot of these jokes. <laughs> yes, I got you. And and she ruined Rocky for me. She it's ruined like, Rocky, it's I just, know. So, but what about Huckabee? So someone like Huckabee, who's supposedly... Like, to me, this is this is proof that he's not running for president, and he's running to run the Christian right. Yes. He's... And I wish people would just say that. I, I wish almost he could say that, and he could say, well, you know what? I'm up on this stage because I do control, or at least want to control, a portion of this country, and yeah. I want to keep controlling it. And then we could be honest about it, and then he would disappear when he gets, uh, yeah. when the primaries go further. But he's not really running for president, right? Isn't he running to, running to own for... that degree of power? I think you're a very perceptive, Dave, which is, I think, why you have your own show. Once in a while, <laughs> I get one. Really. And yes, that is exactly what he's doing. He's running to get speaking fees. He's running to be the biggest Christian on stage. So now whoever does become president, he's like the Billy Graham. They have to come through him to get to the religious right that they're going to need. So it's all that. He's the biggest charlatan of all of them. Yeah. Because at least Donald Trump, who is a big uh, asshole, won't take that extra step step of putting the cross on his sleeve like like Huckabee was and Huckabee's complete phony right and, and Trump not that I ever want to defend Trump but you know they asked Trump about the gay marriage thing and he said look the Supreme Court made a decision I I would have to abide by the Supreme Court 
that shows a better understanding of how government works than Santorum or Huckabee, who want you to just pick which laws. Can yes. you imagine if we could all just pick, well, I'm not going to pay taxes. Morally, I don't think I should have to. Yeah, separate but equal, so that means we can just ignore it. No, that's not what yeah. that, how yeah. that means. <laughs> right. But I do like what you're saying about he's running to get uh, speaking engagements. Mm -hmm. to but then the, the reality is, how much money is he spending to try to run for president versus how much he's, he would actually ever make as a speaker. But he's not spending his own money. Right. right? So he's not, yeah. I yeah. Mean, right. It's not, it's not his. And ultimately, it's not about the speaking money, per se, as much as the, just the influence that he will just yes. run the Christian right, like be the next Billy Graham or something. But I, but I want to back up to something that you said earlier about this, this atheist thing, because mm -hmm. the first two episodes of the show, we had Sam Harris, who's probably the most outspoken atheist. My, one of my all-time favorite that I know. atheists. Uh, one of Jimmy's favorite atheists. <laughs> I love and, him. And Cara Santa Maria, uh, also an atheist. And we talked a little bit about um, atheists in politics. And every poll shows that people would never vote for an atheist people hate atheists. Why are we so afraid of secularism? I think this is sort of what you were saying before, right. but why are we afraid of people that would that would base their decisions on the law of the land and not the imaginary? Uh... I think it's because everyone has this like ultimate fantasy of the pre you get to be president. Something terrible goes down somewhere. He it... has his finger on the button, right? Like what what's going to happen? You want to know that your president is going to be in that dark space in his room before he has to make some terrible decision like, dear God, you want the comfort of knowing it's a whole facade, it's a fake, but right. you want that, you know what I mean? You don't want someone that's just like, and this is the line, the column of good things that'll happen, this is the column of bad things. I think because people want to be able to hang hope on a president, and, and as weird as it sounds, I think, well, atheists, you don't hang hope on, you know? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but that's I okay. just yeah. <laughs> No, that's, I think it's the same thing with gay people. Uh, people were uh, against gay marriage until they knew a gay person. And I think people are afraid of atheists until they know an atheist. Yeah, I was against gay marriage till I got gay married. Now I'm, <laughs> now I'm okay with it. But I'm, I, what do you think about? I, that's what I really think it is. Yeah. People just don't know atheists, and they think, well, they're, they, they, in, in fact, they kind of equate them with devil worshippers. Yeah. Right. You know, or, it's like yes. no, they're no worshipping. Yeah. No, which, nothing. Which is exactly why I've been saying on the show repeatedly yeah. now that atheists have to come out. I think the atheist movement. We should do that. The most important thing that gay people ever did was come out, and I think that that's what's next for atheism. Maybe we should start calling ourselves something else. Like I like the, the term non-theist. Yeah. I like that. It sounds better. Yeah. Doesn't it? It's like, I'm not into this shit. Right. But don't you hate that you even have to associate with the term? Doesn't that in itself, it's like then you're in the club and what, yeah, yeah. what club would want me kind of thing? Yes. And that, yes. And I don't agree that there's such a thing as militant atheism. I don't, I don't agree. That's like saying you're a mili militant logical person. <laughs> Right. Yes, I will apply logic like Spock <laughs> to every situation. Right, you know all these atheists that are getting rallies together to hurt people. It's, it's just not happening.